Hi gamers, this is Luru and we are here today to do an in-depth guide for Atlas. And although this guide may look a bit too late but this is actually the perfect time to make one because Atlas has just been nerfed so we can actually discuss and study him with his current state. We will talk about and study his skills, item, and emblem build. Later on, I will provide some pro tips and tricks on how to effectively use this OP tank. So be sure to watch this video until the very end if you want to play him much better and improve your overall skill as a player. Also, do not forget to like and hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for you not to miss out on any of my upcoming giveaways and guides such as this one. Again, my name is Luru and this is the In-Depth Guide for Atlas. Press start. Here are the topics of what we will discuss today. The timestamp for each topic should be indicated in the video description below, so do check it out if you have to. This hero is an OP tank that shines best with his setting skills that could crowd control multiple enemies, making him one of the best heroes in team fights. You may have noticed that he's been banned in almost every other game, which proves that he is a force to be reckoned with. For a quick overview of the nerfs he received from the last update, the devs felt like Atlas is way too strong than they initially expected, which is why they have ultimately decided to nerf him. His defense from his passive is lowered down as well as the stand duration provided by his second skill. And I honestly feel like this nerf is fair, but it is highly likely that he would still be further nerfed and still be banned in ranked games, despite just having this nerf. His skill set includes AoE slow, stun, and provides him great move speed, making it much easier to set his skills. So for now, let's get on to our next topic to study his skills. Alright, so we are now on my favorite topic of this guide, which is skill study. Here we would thoroughly study his skills and just really deep dive and dissect this to know the behavior of each. And we can learn how to use this for real game application. And to start off, let's talk about his passive, Frigid Breath. Basically what it does is, he will get this fog-like aura when using any of his skills and enemies caught in the arrow would then be slowed down. But do take note that for the slow to take effect, the enemy must be within the arrow for at least one second. And you would notice this eye shards thingy by the enemy's feet, which indicates that the enemy is being slowed down by your passive. Also, another thing to take note of is that the slow effect would go out as soon as the enemies got out of the range of her passive. So just, just make sure to watch out for that. In addition, he would get an increased physical and magic defense by 45 to 80 while this arrow is in effect, which is pretty decent and much needed by tanks if you would ask me. And this is actually the nerfed version of the increased defense, but I would not complain about that. This is still pretty decent. Next up is his first skill, Annihilate. This is a basic skill wherein Atlas would stop his feet that would cause 3 explosions around him, with each explosion dealing damage to nearby enemies. I've also noticed that I'm unable to completely deal all damage to a single enemy 3 times from all the explosions. If you would look closely, there are only 2 damage indicators that pop up which means one of the explosion did not damage or did not hit the enemy. But then, I tried to use the skill on the most center of the enemy, but this time there's only one damage indicator that popped up, so it must be the, the first or the, the initial hit that damaged the enemy. I've tested this a couple more times, but I just could not manage to get all three damage indicators to pop up, so if you do happen to find how to deal all those damage, 
please do share it in the comment section down below and I would really appreciate it. Going to his second skill, Perfect Match. Now, this is a very interesting skill I'd like to talk about because when using the skill, he will enter what is called Ejected State. Oh, and um, by the way, just a quick FYI, Atlas is this squid-like creature inside the robot. So again, he's not this limpy guy lying on the ground, but instead, he's the squidward-like creature inside of him. So now that we have established that, let us continue. So, when using the skill, the robot would shoot out Atlas straight out of his body and he would eventually catch up to Atlas, stunning all surrounding enemies by one second. And this is actually part of the recent nerf that he got. It was, I believe, 1.5 or 1.2 seconds before, but now it's just a one second stun. But that's still very good considering that this stun could actually hit multiple enemies surrounding him and with a pretty decent AoE too. So a CS skill that can stun multiple enemies, so that's very good. In addition, Atlas would receive a massive move speed boost of 40% and would be immune to any slow skills. On top of that, Atlas and the robot would share the same HP bar and would receive 50% less damage. Meaning, this would make setting up your skills much more easier and his survivability will be greater. But what's really great about this skill is that it synergizes with Atlas's other skills. So most of his combos circle around with his second skill. Say for an example, when using his first skill while in ejected form, both Atlas and the robot would use Annihilate causing 3 explosions each from both Atlas and where the robot is. So if this is executed perfectly, you should be able to deal a massive amount of damage to your enemies by using the skill when both Atlas and the robot are near together. Also, do take note that spells work while in ejected state, and the spell would take effect on Atlas. So let's say if you use this flicker sprint, it would be Atlas to blink or get the move speed boost. Lastly, passives from items takes effect on both Atlas and the robot when in ejected form. As a sample, I have Cursed Helmet equipped right now. And if I use my second skill, you would see that both Atlas and the robot have the Burn Aura. Which means other items with passive would work on both Atlas and the robot. These are items like Dominance Eyes, Thunder Belt, Brute Force Breastplate, and even Demon Hunter Sword which I doubt you would use on him. But now with this test, you should see that Zilong is getting burned from the robot when it passed him by. So you may consider this fact whenever preparing your item build. Oh and actually, just one more thing and I swear this is the last for perfect match. When in the jacket state and you use regen, it will be cancelled by the time Atlas and the robot joins together, which would only last for maybe a few seconds. Meaning, you won't be able to get the maximum HP heal you could get with regen. I believe this is a bug, but a few updates has already gone by after his release, but it still hasn't been fixed yet, so I'm not really sure anymore, but I do hope that this gets fixed very soon. Last on our list is his ultimate, Fatal Links, which is what put Atlas on the topmost banned hero list. This is a huge AoE CC skill that would chain all nearby enemies, and all chained enemies would be repositioned to a target area, and would then be slowed down by 40% that decays over 3 seconds. Also, this is a channeling skill. The longer you charge it, the wider the area of where you can reposition chained enemy heroes. But take note that charging the skill longer doesn't increase the damage. Meaning, even if you don't charge the skill at all, the damage would still be the same. Also, this skill can damage enemies twice, 
The initial damage comes from when enemies are chained, while the second one is when they have been dropped or has been hit when Atlas smashes to the ground. And for the record, most of the damage actually comes from the smash damage. Now let's talk about how his second skill synergizes with his ulti. When in ejected state and you used his ulti, Atlas and the robot would join immediately and his ulti would be cast right away. And since Atlas and the robot join together, surrounding enemies would then be stunned for 1 second and you can just continue to channel your skill to reposition chained enemies. A few behaviors of the skill to take note of is, only initial chain enemies would be repositioned even if enemies are within the range of the charge skill when you start smashing. Also, already chained enemies can escape the chain by getting out of its range before you jump for the smash. So knowing that, you have to carefully consider how long you will charge the skill before the enemy gets out for safety. Lastly, the only way to cancel the channeling of this skill is by suppressing Atlas. And right now, there are only two heroes with suppress effect that is at least known to me, and those are Kaja and Franco. But if you do know other heroes with suppress effect, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. We will now discuss the item build that suits him best. Although, I want to emphasize that there are no fixed build and it must always be adjusted according to your team and enemy's team composition. So what I will be showing you right now are the items that suits Atlas best and why you should go for that item. The first item is, of course, the first form of roaming mask. But you don't have to upgrade it just yet. And as a tank, you must let your core get all the XP, the gold, and all the support that they need early on so you can get the game momentum and snowball towards victory. Second item is your boots for early mobility and help you set up your skills easily. You can use either warrior or tough boots according to your enemy's main source of damage, so just do check out the enemy lineup and adjust accordingly. As for the third item, I usually get immortality, so you will get early survivability for you are the main initiator of the team. And with that, your life would always be on the edge. So to avoid early feeding, I get immortality. With this, you would also have an extra life so you won't have to be afraid diving in for the set. After getting immortality, you can now upgrade your roaming mask to shadow mask. By doing so, your set potential will be greater for the active skill of the mask would make setting much more easier. It would also provide additional stats crucial to Atlas, such as move speed, CD, and HP. It would also provide you higher XP when getting assist from kills, so it is nice to get this early on so you can take advantage of the perks given by the upgraded mask. You must be wise when getting your fourth item. Study the game and analyze what is really needed. Should you go for defensive item or support item? But if you notice that you're still getting squished despite having immortality, then I suggest that you build a defensive item. You may either go with Dominance Ice to complement the slow effect of your passive, or Athena's Shield if the enemy ranks have high magic damage. But if you think that you're on the winning end and you want to weigh more on the momentum, then I highly suggest that you go for Fleeting Time for your fourth item. If you do, you will be able to utilize your combo much more often and set more clashes to dampen enemies further to the ground, to the point that they won't be able to recover the game anymore, and potentially get an easy early to mid game win. Fifth and sixth item must be an additional defensive item. You can still choose between Dominance Ice and Athena Shield like explained earlier. Or consider getting yourself a Twilight Armor if the enemy have a heavy hitting carry that capitalizes on critical damage like Bruno, Granger, Leslie, and Ling. Here are some other items that you may consider getting as an alternative. If the enemy doesn't have any magic damage, or if their magic damage isn't a threat at all, then 
you may consider getting Antique Cuirass instead of Athena Shield. On the other hand, if they doesn't have much physical damage, then you may get Cursed Helmet and replace Twilight Armor or Dominant's Ice. Like we discussed during the skill test earlier, the item's passive Burn Aura works on both Atlas and the robot while in ejected state, so it is a good item to get for him. Just be reminded that item builds are always adjustable according to the situation, and you must be wise on what items to get. So with that, let's get on to our next topic. This time, let us talk about the best spells to use for him that would complement his skills and role as an initiator. For Atlas, whenever choosing a spell for him, always remember and consider that Atlas will be the one to use the spell when in ejected form. As an initiator, my most used spell for him is Flicker. This way, I can use Flicker while in ejected form to possibly get an awesome 5 man set. I can dive in and reach their core from their backline and even go tart diving with the help of Flicker. And since this is a very versatile spell, it can also be used on other purposes like say escaping out of death or chasing escaping enemies. Other than Flicker, you can also consider getting Petrify. You may use it right before you use your ulti so it will buy you more time to channel your skill a little longer. Or, you may use it right after you use your ulti, so all pulled enemies will be petrified. Flame Shot is also another option for you to choose. You can use it to push enemies further once you reposition them with your ulti or snipe escaping enemies. I haven't tried other spells just yet but Flicker is what fits my playstyle best. So you may just play around with my recommended spells or other spells until you find the best spell that fits your playstyle. Next up on our topic discussion is Emblem Build. Tank Emblem is the only emblem I use for him because it have all the necessary and crucial stats needed by Atlas such as you have defense, HP, and cooldown of course. My talent points goes to HP. For both Atlas and the robot have shared HP while in ejected state. And with higher HP, the higher health points are distributed amongst the two. Cooldown is next, for it can greatly help with having your combo wombo being online when needed. This would also help you if you won't be able to get the fleeting time for cooldown. It would also make your setting skills and escape potential higher by having your second skill cooldown to be very low. Lastly, I spent my talent points on tenacity for it provides the additional tankiness needed when diving in to help you survive hard clashes. But if you don't have tank emblem then, you may also get the support emblem instead and go with move speed, hybrid region, and for the talent, pull yourself together for the flicker cooldown reduction so you can use your combo second skill to flicker to ulti. Before we get on to our last topic, button mash, like and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell now. Now we're off to our last topic of this guide wherein we will discuss some pro tips and tricks on how to play him effectively. First let us talk about when is the best time to use Atlas and what are the heavy counters for him. He is best used when there are many squishy enemies or mobile enemies that needs to be put in their right place to be burst down, like most MMs and assassins. But beware if there are more heroes with CC immunity like say Chao, Grok, 1-1 one, one, and his worst matchup, Diggy. So if possible, ban Diggy if you're planning on using Atlas. Also, a smart player would use Purify when facing against Atlas. So if you ever encounter a smart player like that, try to lure their Purify skills out first so you can confidently go for your combo. You can lure it out by faking sets or spamming some skills that may cause them to use their Purify unknowingly or as a reflex. 
Another counter for him are heroes that can knock you back like Valir or the accursed flame shot spell. While in ejected state and you have been pushed back by Valir's skill as a sample, Atlas would be pushed back and rejoined with the robot, and because of this, you won't be able to complete your set. Next up are some pro tips and tricks with his skills that would automatically make you better Atlas if you learn them. Let us start with his passive skill for the tips. Keep in mind that when using his skill, his passive would be triggered. His passive isn't only good for slowing enemies down but Atlas would also have a higher physical and magic defense while his passive is in effect and this is very good for his survivability. And if you find yourself in the situation that the enemies are chasing you down and you won't be able to outrun them, you may use any of your skills regardless if you will hit them or not for the additional defense. You may actually have a better chance of surviving if you do this rather than running away but eventually be chased down by your enemies. Next up for our tips and tricks is his first skill, Annihilate. Try to use this as close as possible to the enemy heroes because there's a slight delay before the explosions could reach its max range. So there's a tendency that this could easily be dodged by enemies by simply walking away from it like a boss. Just bear in mind that you would like to get the most damage as possible from this skill. Next is his most versatile skill, Perfect Match. And I actually have quite a number of tips for this one. So the first is, while in ejected form and your ulti is in cooldown, try to chase the enemies and stick close to them without attacking. This way, they will be slowed down and you may use Annihilate once the enemy is right between the robot and Atlas. Because if you get too excited and use Annihilate very soon then, you're not using the skill with most efficiency and you're not getting the highest damage potential for this skill. Also, take note that when ejecting Atlas out of the robot, Atlas can pass through walls. And one of the best ways to set a clash is using the technique which we all call Surprise Effect. You can hide in the bush next to a wall, then eject from there to enter the enemy's backline to get the perfect set. This is also a great skill to use when escaping. Not only that you can pass through walls but Atlas and the robot would have shared HP, would only receive 50% damage and not to mention slow immunity. So just outmaneuver your enemies and pass through walls to escape certain death. This is also a great skill to use when zoning enemies out. Just imagine yourself in your enemy's shoes just for a second. Whenever you see Atlas coming towards you, you just cannot help but to back down and get out of its way. Well, unless you want to be offered the life to Atlas's allies. And the best time to zone out? is when your team have to take objectives like say taking turtle, lord, or turrets, or if you will be invading your enemy's neutral camp. You can use this skill to win early laning by harassing and zoning out your enemies. These AoE stun it gives when Atlas and the robot joins together actually have a pretty decent damage, which can then be followed up by your allies to pick up the kills. Also make sure that you crash where there are more enemies or where their prior enemy is. More enemies that will be stunned, the better it is. Launch attack. An enemy to complement your second skill and help with setting things up, you can take advantage of whatever this wind icon looking thing is to give you a sudden movement boost. An enemy has been slain. And that's it for perfect match. Next up is his ulti, 
But before getting onto that, have you already button mashed like and subscribe? If no, then start button mashing. As soon as you get your ulti up, it would be a great idea to roam right away while the enemies are still squishy and out of form. This is also you can get the early momentum. After all, your ulti is very OP and can destroy any enemies very easily, but of course with the help of her allies. When setting up for the ulti, take advantage of the move speed boost and slow immunity provided by the second skill. Although some say that there's a bug when using the ulti while in ejected form, but I have never experienced it yet, so just go with it. To properly set the ulti, it is best practice to view and scout where the enemies are, so you will know where you have to go and which hero are you aiming for. To make it much easier to dive in and get to where the prio enemy is, use Flaker while in ejected form. And when you get to the place where you need it to be, you can pop your ulti right away for an epic quick set. However, you would find situations where you don't have the second skill and cannot get to where the enemies are. Instead, you can use Flaker to position yourself and pop up the ulti. But do take note that since you use the ulti while you are not in ejected state, then the enemies won't be stunned when using the ulti and they can escape the chains easily. So if you happen to set without the second skill, then it would be a good idea to release the ulti sooner before chained enemies escape. An awesome way to set up skill is by utilizing the active skill of Shadow Mask by concealing yourself while in ejected form to sneakily get to the enemy ranks without being easily noticed. But beware when using the Shadow Mask. You must make sure that you use it right after ejecting, because if you conceal yourself before ejecting, Atlas would be visible. If you are using the skill while in ejected state, the enemies would be stunned by 1 second. And this 1 second stun is very precious because this would buy you more time to charge the skill longer, to place the enemies where you need them to be. Always focus and be mindful of where you must place the enemies because placing the enemies near your allies is not always such a good idea. Sometimes you can place them a little farther away from your MM or mages but it's still within their range. Here's a sample of what I'm talking about. Since I placed Aldus near Estes, it seems like I just help Aldus kill Estes instead of me actually protecting him. This time, it's a correct sample of setting up your ulti while protecting your ally. If I place Uranus near Farsa, there's a possibility that she can die if we won't manage to burst Uranus down, which could be very risky and potentially cost us a game. When using the second and ulti skill combo, the enemies would be stunned and technically knocked up when you raise them in the air. Given that, this skill could cancel different and multiple skills. You can cancel some of the meta's deadliest skill like Farza and Claude's ulti and many more skills that could wipe your whole team out. So you may also consider using the skill to counter and cancel some of the enemy skills. On the other hand, since only Suppress Effect is the only thing that can cancel this skill then, there is almost nothing that can stop Atlas on his tracks to finish his setup. Not even the Lord's knockout could cancel it. My last tip goes to all setter heroes. What is the purpose of setting up a clash if you don't have any allies to follow up on your set? or if there are no allies that you are setting it up for. As you have just seen, my ulti was wasted and all enemies escaped safely. The only ally I have here right now is Estes and how could Estes and I kill all those enemies with just us two? So when going in for a setup, 
being mindful where your allies are or if they would be able to be in the right place by the time that you finish the setup. Before I dive in for the set, there are multiple factors that you have to take note of. Are there any obstacles that may hinder your allies to be in the right place like say, walls, enemy heroes, a turret that needs to be defended, or simply miscommunication? Given that, do not recklessly set up just because your skills are in cooldown or if you are in the right position to set, for it would be pointless and not to mention meaningless if your allies won't be there for you to follow up. To help avoid these issues, communicate with your allies before you go for the set by signaling the attack button or letting them know that your ulti is ready which is usually easily understood by veterans or by people that's focused in game. His skills have different combos and ways to use it, but here are some of the most efficient way on how to use his combo. Most of his combo starts with his second skill when the jetting Atlas out. Follow it up by Annihilate when Atlas and the robot are near together to hit the enemies with as many explosions as possible. Then finally, use your ulti. This would give you 1 second stun from when Atlas and the robot joins together. Then charge your ulti as long as possible just before the enemies could escape the clutches of your chains. But if the limited time doesn't allow and you have to go for a quick set, you may opt out from using Annihilate and just go straight with your ulti to go for the set. So a quick set combo would be, again start it with your second skill, conceal using the shadow mask, and flicker in to where the enemies are, then quickly pop your ulti. After studying and learning all of this, what do you think of Atlas now? Is he really an OP hero? Although there are other OP heroes in the meta today like say Hylos, Graf, and Kufra, we could just not deny how OP his CC skills are. If you have any more tips and tricks, item build, or any input that you would like to add to help with this guide, then I would highly appreciate it. Just put your input in the comment section down below so I can read. Tell me what other heroes you would like to get an in-depth guide of or if you have any in-game or general questions, just let me know so I can answer it all for you. Also, I would just like to promote this Facebook page of my very good friend, Lord Beerus. He also hosts weekly giveaways like me and regularly stream his gameplays and let me tell you now, his skills as a player is top-notch. Although he's more active in Facebook, he does have a YouTube channel. But he's just starting to sort his channel out so there's not much in there right now. So let us all help him by following his Facebook page, watch his streams, of course join his giveaways, and kickstart his YouTube channel by subscribing to it. I can vouch and guarantee that this man is no joke. He isn't named Lord Beers for no reason. So I hope to see you there in his Facebook page and in his YouTube channel. The link for his Facebook page and YouTube channel should be indicated on the video description down below. But of course, let us not forget about my own channel. Do not forget to button mash, like and subscribe, and I'm also pretty sure that I will be using this video for my giveaways. So help yourself by turning on the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss out on my winner reveal, other giveaways, and of course, more guides like this. Also, a very special thanks to I Am Named Jill for sponsoring my recent giveaways. Again, my name is Luru. Game on! Press start.